Hi, so it is without a doubt that the subject of inverters can be very complicated, but it doesn't have to be. There's actually quite a range of inverters available, and one that's used in energy storage is a push-pull inverter. It's actually quite popular because it has a number of pros that recommend it. Obviously, like everything, there's a number of cons against it as well, and you find that with everything. There's always pros and there's always cons, but it is a used type of inverter for converting your 12 volt to whatever it is your AC supply is required, because that's what an inverter does. An inverter takes a DC battery voltage, steps it up and converts it into alternate current so we can use it in a household. And 120 volts in a lot of the world and 230 volts here in the UK. So it's a combined device that will convert DC into AC and step it up. Now, when we're thinking about stepping something up, obviously we're thinking about a transformer. Now, a transformer is a coil, a core, and another bigger coil. So this would be a step-up transformer. We put a low voltage in here, and a high voltage comes out there. Now, it'll only work if it's got an AC going in there, because we need the magnetic field to build up and collapse and build up and collapse, and that's what pushes the AC out of this side. And here we want an AC waveform like that at, say, 230 volts. Adjust that for your own country. Now, interestingly enough, if we put a negative in here and a positive in there, then the output is reversed. What we'll get is a positive here and a negative here at the output. And that's very interesting. Because if we put two coils in there and we join them up, and we make that always positive, and these will be negative swapped over. So remember, if that's negative, we get positive negative. If we put a negative in there, then we'll reverse it. We'll get a positive negative. So by flipping which one of these two wires, this one or this one, we connect to ground, we can actually get a flip on here. Now it's an approximation of AC, because if we have a DC here, and we basically switch it off and on, what we'll get out here is a waveform like that, where it's going up and down relative to a zero voltage, swapping over the plus and the minus. But it looks very like this, and there is something we can do about it. But just get hold of this for a second. So we want this one to be always positive. So let's stick a battery in there, positive, and connect it straight up. So this one we need to connect to a switch here and a switch here so that when we close this switch, this switch is open. When we close that switch, that switch is open. And of course, if we do that, what we'll get is the right waveform. Now, remember, a transformer is an inductor, so it has a back EMF, and you need to protect this against the back EMF. And you do that by adding a couple of diodes across the switch to prevent that going back down and basically blowing up your battery. So a couple of diodes there will stop that from hitting your battery. Now that will create a jagged waveform. Because it's pulsing, it's switching off and on, then relative to zero we're going plus, minus, plus, minus on this side. If we actually banged a great big capacitor on there, then what we get is this. We'd actually get a smoothed AC waveform coming out of here. Now that is all there is to a push-pull. It's a perfectly functional inverter that will do the job based on two switches. Now of course these switches they use MOSFETs from them, not actual physical switches, but essentially that's it. Now you can do other things and there are other requirements that can generally be put in. So one of the things to worry about for instance is um, saturation, current flow. So you need to watch out for that sort of stuff. But that is the basics of a simple push-pull uh, inverter based on a transformer 
where you center tap the transformer. So this coil and this coil are identical. The center tap gets connected to the positive, the other two sides get connected to the negative, but through switches, diodes across the switches for the back EMF, and then a smoothing capacitor whacked on that so that we get a smooth waveform. That is all there is to it. The rest is about sizing components and then purifying it and taking care of it and making sure that it actually doesn't exceed its limitations. But in essence, there isn't much more to it than that. Okay, so to put this into practice, I've got a transformer here. Here I've got an output side with its two leads and an input side that's been centre tapped. So they're the two end leads and the black ones are centre tapped. Now the two out leads just connect to the meter because we're going to read what it is and the meter is on AC volts. So it doesn't matter which way around it goes. Now remember, this one, the centre one, is the one that we always feed with the positive and the two negatives are the ones that we switch between the two negatives. Now to flop between the two negatives you'd normally use transistors but we're going to use a straightforward switch and the straightforward switch is just a relay so it's a double pole relay and it'll flip between the normally open and the normally closed so of course that will act like a switch. Now I'm not going to bother with the diodes or with the capacitor we're just going to see how this thing works. So we take the two end pieces which are our negatives and connect them to the normally closed and normally open of the relay. <coughs> now we need our relay in on the relay common and that's obviously going to connect to the negative of the battery. Now we have a coil, and the coil is going to be the whole thing that runs it, so the coil has a positive and negative, and we're going to put that on a switch, because we need to turn that coil off and on in a timing sequence. So me pressing the switch represents an outside timing source. Use lots of things as a timing source, a 555 timer will do it, but I'm going to use me pressing a switch at a red, and that's going to be my timing signal that will turn the relay coil off and on, and that will flop the negative between the normally closed, normally open. So let's put that in place. And connect the negative of the battery to the other side of the coil. And there we go. Now the only other thing I need to do is take my centre tap and connect it to my positive so it runs through either side. Remember reversing. There we go. It's on! <laughs> And now if I press that button and we watch here. Then we're able to transform that 12 volts through this into AC at around about 80 volts. <laughs> that is impressive and basically all a push-pull inverter is. Okay, these push-pull inverters are found all over the place. You find them in the CFL tubes, actually, of laptops. And you do find them as sine wave converters for 60 hertz and output as an actual in-your-house inverter. And you normally, obviously, use transistors or MOSFETs for the switches, which is what we use the relay for. It's just a, a mechanical switch, but you replace those with MOSFETs. Now you use an actual switch as the timing circuit, but you can externally drive a timing circuit. And a practical example, one that you could build and actually use, looks like this. So here we're using MOSFETs, uh, and there's a good reason for that. The um, transistors themselves aren't very good when it comes to um, current-fed inverters. And current-fed inverters are what you want when you're looking at a, a battery or solar cell inverter. So it's best to do them with MOSFETs. 
Then the resistors provide to turn on, while the diodes D2 and D3 provide turn off and isolate the gates from the high voltage that you would get from the spiking that we talked about. Now, an example of the parts is the Q1, Q2, Q3, the MOSFET STP36NF06L would be good. Now, I'll put this in the description, incidentally. R1 and R2 would be 10 ohms. D1 would be a diode like MBR1035. D2 and 3, maybe MUR120. And you'll notice there's an inductor there, L. And that would be about 100 micro Henry's with a capacitor of C as 0.1 microfarads. Now, this design is especially good if you're driving the switches from an ex uh, external circuit. Uh, and it gives you a fixed frequency that's independent of the core, because very often the core can actually affect the frequency of everything and get frequency drift. But doing something like this with an external driver will keep that frequency on target, which is exactly what you want, of course. The uh, inductor is important, actually, because without it, then you can get um, saturation of the core, which can be a, an irritating thing, can lead to blown transistors. So if you stick an inductor in there, that helps solve that issue as well. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful because um, they're really not that difficult to um, build one that would be uh, basically home built. I mean, the transformers, you can either wind yourself or you can actually buy transformers that will do that job just fine. The rest of the components are freely available and um, building a one yourself is not really that much out of anybody's capabilities. And certainly the way it works is extremely simple as we've seen. So I hope Hope it was of interest to you. Uh, thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.